Hello, thank you for joining with me for the meditation for Lesson 76. I am under no laws but God's, and I apologize. I did not post yesterday. I, um, we have a new puppy, and let's just say it's exhausting, so I haven't had a moment. I am under no laws but God's. Go ahead and sit with your back supported, head and neck free. Start with the 4x breath in through the nose for a count of 4, 3, 2, 1. Hold it. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hold it. Inhale for a count of 4. Hold it. And exhale for a count of 8. And hold it. And repeat that four times. I am under no laws but God's. There are no laws except the laws of God. This needs repeating over and over until you realize it applies to everything that you have made in opposition to God's will. Your magic, be it um, pills, anything in this world, what it is meant to save does not exist, only what it is meant to hide will save you. The laws of God can never be replaced. We will devote today to rejoicing that this is so. It is no longer a truth we would hide. It is a truth that keeps us free forever. Magic imprisons, but the laws of God make free. The light has come because there are no laws but His. So the different kinds of laws that we believe we must obey include laws of nutrition, immunization, medication, and of the body's protection in innumerable ways. Think further. You believe in the laws of friendship, of good relationships, and reciprocity. Perhaps you even think there are laws which set forth what is God's and what is yours. Many religions have been based on this. They would not save, but damn in heaven's name. They are no more strange than other laws you hold must be obeyed to make you safe. There are no laws but God's. Dismiss all foolish, magical beliefs today and hold your mind in silent readiness to hear the voice that speaks the truth to you. You will be listening to one who says there is no loss no loss, not laws, L-A-W-S, but no loss, L-O-S-S, under the laws of God. Payment is neither given nor received. Exchange cannot be made. There are no substitutes, and nothing is replaced by something else. God's law for, God's laws, excuse me, forever give and never take. Realize how foolish are the laws you thought upheld the world you thought you saw. Hear him who tells you how foolish these laws are. Then listen further. He will tell you more about the love your father has for you, about the endless joy he offers you, about his yearning for his only son created as his channel for creation, denied to him by his belief in hell. Let us today open God's channels and let his will extend through us to him. Thus is creation endlessly increased. His voice will speak of this to us as well as of the joys of heaven, which his laws keep limitless forever. I am under no laws but God's.
I am under no laws but God's. Now join with me as I read some of Ken Wapnick's thoughts on this lesson. It was well over 20 years ago that questions asked about this particular lesson led me to speak about the two levels on which A Course in Miracles was written. In the prelude, he discussed that level one is the Course's metaphysical foundation, which contrasts the reality of God and heaven with the illusion of the ego's thought system and the world that arose from it. On this level, there is no compromise between truth and illusion. Level 2 treats only the illusory realm, contrasting the ego's wrong-minded thought system of separation with the Holy Spirit's right-minded thought system of atonement. The reason students find this lesson so difficult, not to mention infuriating, is their confusion of the two levels not understanding that the purpose of the level two discourse is to meet us in the illusory state we believe we are in and not to make statements of absolute truth. Thus, even though the body is inherently illusory, we are not asked to dismiss it. Quite the contrary, we are asked to pay careful attention to it and its place in our special relationships. For these become the classrooms in which we learn the Holy Spirit's lessons of forgiveness. From this perspective, we can see how Jesus pokes fun at the body, more importantly, at our use of it. You may recall Jesus' statement that it is practically impossible to deny our physical experience in this world, and that's from chapter 2. Therefore, he is not asking us in this lesson to deny our bodies by not taking medicine, let alone not eating, breathing, spending money, etc., getting puppies, yada, yada. (laughs) Rather, Jesus presents a vision of what it is like to be in the real world without the belief in bodies. A passage in the attainment of the real world highlights the complete absence of separation that characterizes this advanced state of mind. And I'm going to read this from chapter 13, section 7, part 1, or paragraph 1, I'm sorry. The real world has no buildings, and there are no streets where people walk alone and separate. There are no stores where people buy an endless list of things they do not need. It is not lit with artificial light, and night comes not upon it. There is no day that brightens and grows dim. There is no loss. Nothing is there but shines and shines forever. And that is the real world. And it's not describing a physical place, but the healed mind in which the thought of separation has been undone. In that state, the holy instant wherein we have accepted the atonement for ourselves, there is no longer a body. Okay? Therefore, if there is not a body, there can be no laws to govern it. That is the point here. Jesus is not making fun of us, nor again challenging us to give up our beliefs in the necessity for medicine, food, or relationships. He simply reminds us that what we believe in is not really there. This new understanding enables us no longer to take our physical and psychological experiences in the world as seriously. Sorry, I'm so sorry. He simply reminds us that what we believe in is not really there. This new understanding enables us no longer to take our physical and psychological experiences in the world as seriously as we once did. Reflecting our learning, I'm sorry, our having learned not to take the tiny, mad idea of separation seriously either. Once again, this is not meant to be a statement in which Jesus is pressuring us to give up our belief in the body. In fact, he says in the text, and this is from chapter 20, section 7, your question should not be, how can I see my brother without the body? Ask only, do I really wish to see him sinless? Rather than having us deny our experience that bodies exist external to us, Jesus stresses that his goal for us is to change our minds about the body, about its purpose. He urges us to no longer 
project our perceived sin onto others, thereby attacking them and reinforcing the belief in separate interests. Forgiveness, the message of A Course in Miracles, rests on the simple premise that our interests are one. I am under no laws but God's. We will repeat this dedication as often as possible today, at least four or five times an hour, as well as in response to any temptation to experience ourselves as subject to other laws throughout the day. This is our statement of freedom from all danger and all tyranny. It is our acknowledgement that God is our Father and that His Son is saved. Ah, the acceptance of the atonement. Jesus is asking us to strengthen our resolve to accept this acceptance throughout the day at least every 12 to 15 minutes. Thus, we seek to remember as often as we can, and especially when tempted, to believe in the ego's laws of scarcity and deprivation of specialness and loss, that there is no will but God's, no laws but His. Then we gladly acknowledge, yes, I made these laws and still believe in them, but now I am willing to admit that I was wrong. The truth is that God is my father and not the ego, and therefore I am saved from thoughts of sin and guilt, for they have disappeared into his love. Let us remember this happy fact throughout the day. Why would we not want to remember that we are under no laws but God's. And so it is. I thank you so much for joining with me. I apologize for the late posting of this video. Have a beautiful day. I will see you in a few minutes. <laughs> I love you.